What's up and welcome to the video. This is the OnePlus 11 and in a really interesting turn of events, OnePlus has kind of had a return to form moment, I guess. And when they announced this phone, I was actually really excited to get my hands on it and review it because over the past few years, we've seen OnePlus slowly make a transition from being the flagship killer that they initially started off as to more of a true flagship phone. Last year's OnePlus 10 Pro was a flagship phone with a flagship price tag. And this year, interestingly enough, they've changed up their own trend and they've launched a phone that starts at $699, but they're still trying to take a shot at those flagship phones. And this phone does a lot of great things. So let's get into the details about the new $699 OnePlus 11. Like I said, I was really excited whenever OnePlus announced this phone and you could tell they were ready to kind of re-explore their old roots a little bit because when you look at some of the marketing material they used on this phone, they were saying things like, this phone is like the Pros and the Maxes and the Ultras, but it's not overpriced. So I got super, super excited whenever they went back to like that OnePlus, you know? But there's also the natural question of when a phone starts at $699, which by the way is $200 cheaper than last year's OnePlus 10 Pro when it launched, what exactly is OnePlus omitting from this phone or what aspects of this phone might not necessarily be flagship level since it seems like they're still targeting those flagship phones with the 11, but what did they change or like what did they cut corners with? in order to get to that $700 price tag. And I would say a lot of the changes are your pretty classic stuff, right? So one thing to keep in mind, this phone has an IP64 water and dust resistance rating as opposed to IP68. So like it's good for maybe like a mist or like some light splashes. I, I wouldn't take any chances and submerge this phone if you happen to buy it. One, it'll be a big one for some of you out there. It wasn't really for me and I'll tell you why, but one potentially big omission is that there is no wireless charging on this phone. It's hilarious how I found that out. As soon as I got it, I tried to place it on the OnePlus warp charger that I have. The wireless warp charger didn't work. Was wondering why. Realized I forgot that it didn't have wireless charging, but that wasn't a big deal for me because inside the box, which I have to give OnePlus a ton of credit for, they give you the 80 watt charging brick and power cable, which can take this phone from 0% to 100% in 25 minutes. Zero to 100 in under half an hour flat is impressive. 5,000 milliamp hour battery, by the way. And the fact that they give you that hardware inside the box is even better. You just don't really find too many companies that are doing that anymore. And the last thing I would say is the camera system. Now I'm not saying the camera system is bad, but I'm just saying like when you compare it to the flagship phones that this is targeting, right? Your S23s, your S23 Ultras, your Pixel 7 Pros, like Android phones that have spectacular camera systems that produce some incredible results. I would say that the camera system on the 11 is good, right? Like it's perfectly acceptable and it's going to be perfectly acceptable even for someone like myself that doesn't emphasize the camera system on a smartphone a lot. But if you start comparing it to flagship Android smartphones with flagship Android cameras, you'll definitely find some discrepancies there. So let's talk about camera hardware and then we'll talk a little bit about picture results. You have a 50 megapixel wide angle, 48 megapixel ultra wide angle, and a 32 megapixel telephoto lens. And as far as video capabilities, it's your standard suite 1080p, 3060, 4K 3060, and even 8K 24. So that's pretty cool. Now, as far as the camera results go, this is the third year that they've been in partnership with Hasselblad for image processing, color tuning, and stuff like that for their camera hardware. And I would say with each generation, it's got better. So I like the results on the 11 versus last year's 10 Pro. And uh, it's, I would say, your classic OnePlus color reproduction and image processing. I think OnePlus actually does a really good job of producing natural color tones with these images. I feel like some of these images, let's say I took them on a Samsung Galaxy, they might be slightly more oversaturated. But again, in my opinion, I don't necessarily know if this is like a flagship quality camera system, but at the end of the day, I think that it is perfectly acceptable and I don't think you're ever going to come to a point in time where 
unless camera is your highest priority, I don't think you'll ever get to a point where you might be wanting something extra out of this camera because it is capable of producing good shots. But you know what is flagship level about the OnePlus 11? Practically everything else. When I first got this phone and I took it out of the box, I didn't notice the things that it was missing. Quite honestly, the first thing I noticed was how much I actually liked how this phone is built. It's, uh, I'm one of those people where like, and I know it's not for everybody, but I associate a phone having a little bit of heft, like some weight to it with premium feel. I, I gotta be honest with you, right? Like I am, I have the opportunity, it's, it's a, obviously like a blessing, right? To be able to test out so many different Android flagship phones. So I'll hold this phone in one hand versus like the 7 Pro or a different flagship, the 6 Pro or the S23 or like whatever the case might be. I really like the way the 11 feels in hand. There's a little bit of heft to it. That feels nice. The back of the phone, it has this like sandstony type look to it, especially in this Titan black color. And it's actually a lot smoother than you would think it is to the point where it's almost a little bit slippery to hold. Like I think out of all the phones I've tested so far, this one has been the closest to falling out of my hands on multiple occasions. And it's also slightly narrower compared to a lot of other flagship phones that I've set it next to. But I think it, re it leads to a really nice hardware package that feels really nice in the hand. And something that I think is a little underrated, speakers and haptics on this phone are really, really nice as well. And the alert slider is back for those of us who like that, which I think is probably 100% of the OnePlus fan base. So yeah, this phone is really well built and then you power it on and you realize that the display is also flagship quality as well. Now there's not anything like too crazy about the display this year round because they basically just replicated what was on the 10 Pro, which was already fantastic. So 6.7 inch display, quad HD resolution, 120 Hertz refresh rate, in display optical fingerprint sensor, like all of the great stuff that would constitute a flagship level display is on this phone and I love it. And I'm happy enough to say that everything internally on the OnePlus 11 is up to 2023 flagship standards as well. Like that goes from processing to some of the decisions OnePlus has made to try to better future-proof this phone, which are pretty cool, and even, you know, battery, right? So from a processing perspective, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, that is, you know, the flagship Android processor for 2023, it's fantastic. As far as performance goes, there's nothing it can't handle, anything that you want to do from multitasking to running heavy graphics intensive applications or games, it can do it just fine. And as far as some of the decisions OnePlus has made to try to better future proof this phone, I actually wouldn't expect to necessarily see in like a $699 device. That's really one of the biggest reasons why I'm even mentioning it. So whenever you look at something like the storage in this phone, it's UFS 4.0, which is like one of the fastest, if not the fastest storage options we have right now. As far as RAM, it's not LPDDR4, it's not LPDDR5, it's LPDDR5X. So it's like the fastest type of RAM available for a smartphone right now as well. And then I don't even think we have like Wi-Fi 6 set up in my home yet. This phone is ready for Wi-Fi 7. So, OnePlus made some interesting choices here to make sure that if you do buy this phone, like you're kind of, you know, like it's in it with you in the long haul, which is, you know, really cool to see. And I mentioned earlier, 5,000 milliamp hour battery combined with Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. I've already kind of like experienced what that was like on the S23 line of smartphones, but it's also very similar on the OnePlus 11. Battery life is fantastic. Um, you know, like I would have to charge this phone every like day and a half on some lighter usage days, maybe two days. And that's with multiple hours of screen on time. But the cool thing with the 11, like I also mentioned earlier, you plug it into the 80 watt charger and within 15 minutes, you have more than enough power to last you for at least another day. So flagship level internals all around. You love to see it. Classic OnePlus. And everything is packaged together in a software experience that is running Android 13 out of the box, which is great on top of, or I guess you could say Oxygen OS 13 is on top of Android 13, whichever way you want to phrase it, it doesn't matter. But ever since 
Oxygen OS and Color OS, like they kind of did that whole merger of their software. It's weird, and I'm sure some folks might be in this boat, or maybe not, maybe it's just me, but I, like, it's not that Oxygen OS, like, I don't think it's bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not what I remember OnePlus software, like what they used to be, if that makes sense. Like, I never thought I would see the day where I preferred the software experience on my Galaxy S23 Ultra compared to the software experience that my OnePlus 11 is giving me. But it's strange, I don't know. Oxygen OS just doesn't, doesn't hit me in the feels the same way it used to like several years back. And again, I think that's just attributed to ever since they merged with Color OS, I think that's just kind of been been their thing. Now it's like I said, it's not bad, right? We're in 2023. Any mobile operating system on like a flagship caliber phone is going to be good. There will be some small quirks here and there that you have to get used to. Not bad, but I don't think it's what Oxygen OS used to be, but that's neither here nor there. As far as the phone itself goes, this is, I still think, a fantastic smartphone at again, a super aggressive price point. Now, the thing to keep in mind with a phone like the OnePlus 11 is it's not going to be like the best at everything, but there are some very, very strong categories that this phone brings to the table. And you just have to ask yourself if those categories are what's most important to you. If you absolutely prioritize having great performance, a great display, great battery life, and some ridiculously fast wire charging, then I think this phone is for you. If you care about having all the bells and whistles, the best IP rating, the best camera system to go with, the best type of hardware, the best biggest, boldest display, whatever the case may be, then this phone might not be for you. But then again, that's why that's not why this phone was made to begin with. I happen to really like the OnePlus 11. I think it's a great phone. And I absolutely love to see OnePlus take this kind of return to form where they try to pack as much great stuff as possible into a super aggressive price tag, which they definitely pulled off with the OnePlus 11. So if you enjoyed the review, leave us a uh, like and subscribe down below. Let me know what you think in the comment section as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.